This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Clean Cause. Need a quick boost to get you going? Grab a Clean Cause organic sparkling herba mate and get your day going with 160 milligrams of caffeine that won't cause the crashes, the jitters, uh, make you feel weird. You ever drink some of those energy drinks or maybe you drink too much coffee? Start to feel like your skin's crawling out of you and you just feel weird. Clean Cause doesn't make you feel like that, like the other energy drinks and coffee might do. It's low in calories. It's low in sugar. It comes in five delicious flavors. In fact, I'm drinking the Blackberry Clean Cause right now at this moment. And here's the best part. Every sip, let me get a sip here. Mm. Oh, that's good. That's good. Every sip. Check this out. It makes a difference in the fight against addiction. Clean Cause donates not 5%, not 10%, not 20%, not even 30%. They donate 50% of net profits to support individuals in recovery from drug and alcohol addiction. Grab a boost, live better, transform lives. Head on over to cleancause.com and get 20% off your order with promo code SOBERGUY. That's cleancause.com. Enter the promo code SOBERGUY at checkout and save 20%. That Sober Guy podcast contains adult content, merciless truth, and emotional nudity. Listener discretion is advised. I'm Shane Rammer. You're listening to That Sober Guy podcast, and we help people stay sober. If it's your first time listening, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here today. You can find more podcasts, more resources. You can also contact us by going to thatsoberguy.com. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at that sober guy podcast. All the links from today's show will be in the show notes. Make it easy for you to find. Shout out to Humans Music. If you love the intro, be sure to check those guys out. Today I'm going to be answering some questions, or not necessarily answering some questions, but giving my opinion and feedback. Always like to say, like, I don't have all the answers. Um, I'm just a dude who quit alcohol coming up on 10 years here in September and uh, have have found a new path and uh, decided I don't need that crap in my life. And I love to relate to you guys out there who listen to the show and uh, share some of the things that have worked for me and some of the things that I've worked uh, that I've uh, watched work for other people and of course the things that don't work how do we kind of navigate around and, and live a life and be dudes in this culture this society where alcohol is such a relevant uh, part it's such a big part and the normalcy bias of drinking is uh, I, I didn't know any different growing up that's just what I thought you did when you became a, a teenager and an adult is you drink that's what you do and so I'm here to tell you from uh, my own experience that there's definitely another way. There's a different path. You can still have fun without alcohol. Uh, you can still party. I love to party, but I like to party without alcohol. <laughs> I like to party sober and uh, have a great time doing it. And yes, there is a point where maybe you're in an event, you're at a birthday, a wedding. We're going to talk a little bit more about this today on, in in having a plan and what you can actually do. But there might be a point that comes where you start to feel uncomfortable. You feel a little bit uh, annoyed or like you're ready to go. And that's okay. That's okay. That's, that's a part of this. And you start to get used to it, the more um, time that you do. And, you know, speaking of that, I got to say, sometimes you, you don't get used to it. Actually, I take that back. Let me, let me retract that last, uh, that last statement. I don't know if you ever get a hundred percent used to it. When I think about it, even when that was coming out, I said, we started thinking that that doesn't make, I don't know if that's correct because here's why, because it's a constant learning and growing and um, you're in process. You know, I'll never forget that. I heard in a, in a a celebrate recovery meeting, a guy named Keith, I can't remember his last name right now, but great dude, like 30 plus years sober. And he just, he just laid it out real simple. He said, I'm in process. I got 30 years and I'm still in process. We never arrive. We're constantly learning and changing. And so point being is, I don't know that it, that we arrive. I don't know that we get to a point where it's like, Hey, I'm hundred percent comfortable in this situation. I know that I've gotten a lot better at it in different situations. Um, you know, we just had, uh, an event last Friday, uh, a couple of members of our family had, um, their birthdays together and really awesome place, man. This little, this little farm in Dixon, California, 
um, it starts with an arc. It's rust something, but um, just a really cool place, man. And they had a, a bluegrass band playing and you're allowed to like bring food and there's some orchards and it's kind of out in the country and I got just a, a huge space, huge barn style and they're serving craft beer and I had like six LaCroix. You, you, nothing that says I'm sober like my sixth LaCroix. <laughs> I think I told my brother-in-law that. Like, and it's true. Like, you know, everyone's having their beers and, um, you know, I'm pounding back $3 LaCroix, which is, which is fine and eating some food and hanging out. And um, I had a great time, you know, and I, uh, I, I feel in, um, uh, I'm in a good enough state of mind and spiritually connected enough where I can go to those things. And if there's ever a moment tomorrow or next week or next month or next year where I'm not in a place where I think that I can do something like that and be in that environment, then I won't go. It's that simple. So I'm always thinking ahead and how I'm feeling and what situation I'm going into. Do I have a reason to be there? And what we'll get into a little bit more of this as I go through some of the questions. So you guys had a couple of questions as well, too. So that's what we're going to kind of go over today. Um, how, like, how do we fit in? How do we still socialize? How do we be social with family, with friends uh, who still drink, who still like to party, um, who still have a good time? It's inevitable. You're never going to get away from it. It's everywhere. And so we, we do, I feel like we do have to learn uh, how to operate, how to, um, how to know where we're at in our own day, our own moment, our own emotional, spiritual strength and can can we do that and there's lots of tips and tools and um things that we can do uh you know to be successful in that i guess is what i'm getting at here so let's just jump right in uh to this and by the way man happy birthday to my brother-in-law my sister-in-law we were just talking that that's whose party we were at last friday man what it was just nice to get out you know it was nice to get out and i do feel like sometimes being sober is tough because you don't you know, you don't go out as much as you would used to because you don't, you just, you don't frequent the same places that you once did because, you know, we know why, because a lot of the time there's like habitual excessive drinking going on in some of these uh, different things. For me, it's, it, that's very rare. Um, but I do hang out with family and friends who still, who still drink and they're family and friends. And as long as it's not an issue, like I'm not, I'm not going to not be around that. It's, you know, I'm still going to go out and I have a good time doing it. And so I just want to encourage you, like, and I'm not saying, dude, if you're like a couple days sober or 30 days sober or a couple months sober, you know, that's a little, that's a little different in my opinion. Like my first couple of years, I wasn't really going around places where there was alcohol. Um, at least I, it was very limited. And so I just want to put that in here as like a caveat. This is all, this isn't, a, a one size fits all thing. Like you have to know where you're at. You have to know how you feel. You have to know how connected you are. You have to know if you've been putting in the reps to build up and, um, and be, uh, a hundred percent surrendered and have acceptance and all this and in life stuff and all the, all that stuff, man, you got to know where you're at and, and make and be the best judge of that before you put yourself in certain situations. So, okay. I, I've babbled enough now. That's what happens sometimes when we do these little, little freestyle ones like this, which I enjoy. And I hope you guys are enjoying the guests too. If you have recommendations for guests coming up, uh, there's a contact form at that sober Uh, also you can hit us up on Instagram at that sober guy podcast. If you have questions, um, if you have comments or if you have guests that you'd like to see on the show, uh, feel free to reach out and uh, let us know. All right. This one comes from Blair. Blair, I apologize. It's taken a minute to get to this, um, you know, to get to this because I know you sent this at least a couple of weeks ago, um, but it's still relevant. I feel like uh, for anybody out there who's got things coming up and it's a great question. It says a big fan of the podcast. Any advice on finding a sober group of people to hang with? Uh, my fiance and I have tons of friends. We have tons of family that still like to party. My fiance also smokes a little bit of the Mary Jane every night. Any advice on how to navigate the situation best, Blair? So Blair, thank you, bro, for the question. Um, I appreciate you following the show and, uh, and, and reaching out because this, my friend, I can promise you does not apply to just you. There's many other dudes out there in the same situation, including myself um, with uh, you know the family, the friends, 
uh, man, it, it can be tough sometimes. So I, th- I figured I'd kind of break it up a little bit and address each part uh, in my own opinion. And, and like I said, I think I said this already, just in case it didn't, I don't have all the answers. I'm, I'm not like anything special. I'm just giving you some feedback and things that I've saw and heard, take it, leave it, do what you want with it. Um, but I hope you, you hear something that helps you or helps your loved one today. That's the ultimate goal in this, uh, in this podcast. So um, how do you find a sober group of people to hang with? It's a great question. Um, you got to put yourself out there. Let's just start there. You have to put yourself out there. And it, that can be scary. And it doesn't mean that you need to grab you know, a, a megaphone and drive around your neighborhood screaming that you're sober, that you quit drinking. Um, but you do have to put yourself out there in the sense of you, you have to show up. You have to show up to um, places where people are, which is going to be a bit scary at times, especially if you're socially awkward, you have social anxiety, which a lot of people do, which is a lot of reasons of, of the reason why they drank in the first place or why they drink in the first place because of that social anxiety. So going out, going to an event, a birthday, um, uh, a meetup, a uh, dinner, I mean, go down the list of things and not being able to have that alcohol friend to help loosen your ass up a little bit and make you not feel weird, that can be scary. So where can you find sober groups of people to hang out with? And I have a few a few options here um, to start with. And they're, you know, for many of us who have been sober a while, these may seem like very obvious. Oh yeah, I, uh, duh. I mean, that's like, <laughs> I just dropped a duh. <laughs> duh. Oh man, do you remember like in third grade? You're like, man, I think recess is like it. 1230. Like, duh. We've been doing recess for like seven years. Duh. <laughs> Good Lord. You butt nugget. That was another one. Remember butt nugget? Remember that from like first grade? Dang, you stupid butt nugget. And then do you remember like when you kick someone in the butt? You like, you didn't know how to fight when you were young and you're like on the playground or whatever. And so like you kind of pushed a little bit and then like you'd like give him a karate kick to the butt. <laughs> Does anyone ever do that? Or was that just me and my nerdy friends back in the day? And like, you'd kick them or like try to, you know, it's like a weird punch because you're not really sure and you don't want to hurt, you don't want to hurt anyone, but you're, yeah, I don't know. It's just hilarious, man. I think back about the things we did as a kid and, um, okay, I'm totally off track now. <laughs> Congratulations, Raymer. This is what you do. Okay. Let me get back on here. You put yourself out there. It can be a bit scary. What here? Oh yeah, that's what I was saying. And when I dropped the duh, the no duh in there is that, like these may seem like obvious places, but I I forget sometimes. This is many people's first time, or first time, you know, like in in the first couple of weeks, days, months, like where they're not drinking, and so I have to be reminded of that sometimes. So this is like these are the spot. These are like the foundational spots, and they branch out from there. So the first one's meetings, obviously. Like there's all types of different meetings. You have AA meetings, you have NA meetings, you have celebrate recovery meetings, which is a Christ centered um, recovery, 12 step. You have refuge recovery, which is more of a Buddhist based, based on um, the uh, the eightfold path. Um, you have smart recovery, which I don't know a whole lot about. Um, that's one of the ones that I haven't uh, really done a lot of um, research on or been a part of. Um, you have all kinds of men's groups, like in your church, you have men's meetup groups, you have sober meetups, you have online groups. And speaking of that, we just launched, if you're looking for a men's group that's online, maybe that's a great place to start. I know a lot of people have social anxiety about going out into, um, like a, a in-person meeting. I remember a couple years ago, I had a guy, I can't remember his name now. Um, you know, he said he, he went to the meeting he was trying to do what was suggested. He, he paced, you know, the whole meeting and then he left and he went back to the next meeting and he did the same thing. He paced and then he left. And then eventually he finally walked through the doors and it was like, and it, it was a great experience. Everyone was cool, very welcoming. He didn't, he didn't feel like an alien and, um, you know, he started that path. So a lot of this is, is like a, going back to the original point of this, how to find a sober group of people to hang out with. Like you have to put yourself out there. And it is scary. I don't. I don't blame you. But here's the thing: without without some sort of uncomfortableness, us getting uncomfortable, there's no growth. If we stay in the same spot and we keep doing the same things, we don't grow. Which means 
what we st- we stay right where we're at. We stay drinking. We stay with bad attitudes. We stay miserable. We stay in the state of just feeling like every day is Groundhog Day. It's the same thing. And so, as much as it is to be uncomfortable, which can be a little bit scary, and you can feel that anxiety. As much as that is, I want you just to think about the other side of that. Yes, this sucks right now. I do feel a little bit weird, but man, I'm going for it. And let those butterflies kind of drive you. Let them move, let them move you forward and, and trust God. Trust the process that you're doing the right thing. You're doing the next right thing. And so back to the online groups. We just we used to do uh, so we have a sober men's group on the locals platform, sober guy men's group. Locals is kind of like a Instagram meets Patreon type of setup. Um, it's uh, owned and operated by a guy named Dave Rubin. Um, and man, there's you have all kinds of creators and artists and um, like I, I know even like Russell Brand has like a huge locals following on there. Doctor Drew. I mean, there's a lot of different like talk show hosts and video creators and. Um, podcasts and artists and all kinds of stuff on there. And basically you can create your own group. It's not censored like a lot of these other platforms are, which is um, a whole different side of things that I don't talk about a lot on the podcast that I can't stand. Uh, But Locals is a great place. And we have over 500 dudes in there who are um, meeting up, checking in, posting, uh, trying to stay connected. And just recently, just this last week, we had our first online meeting again. We used to do them on Wednesdays. Um, I got super busy with baseball and sports and kids and work and all kinds of stuff. And so we kind of um, stopped them for a while. I'm happy to say that they're back again on Mondays at 5 p.m. Pacific time, 5 p.m. Pacific. And uh, all you got to do is you join our locals group. You don't even have to uh, contribute. You don't have to be a supporter. Um, I think it's seven bucks a month to be a supporter, but you don't have to do that. You can still join and see some of the posts on there and um, you can still be a part of it. That's that's the goal. And I still post the link in there. And so if you want to do that and you can hop in on Mondays and and by the way, just a shout out to all our dudes and locals, man. Thank you. Like I, I it's it's been a kind of a long process to uh, to grow, I think. And to stay engaged. I go through little ups and downs with it where like I'm where I feel like it's really engaged sometimes and then it'll kind of kind of cool off for a little bit. I wonder man, what's going on? I need to check in here, see what's up with the, with the guys. But like for the most part, I think everybody stays connected. We're just living living our lives, which is what we're supposed to do. Like I don't exp- I'm not on there every single waking moment of the day. I probably could do some more live streams and stuff which um, you know, which I am looking into. But um, the point is you got accountability there and you have a men's group and that's a great place to start. So if you want to do that, just go to that soberguy.com. All the info's on there. You can download the app, Locals app. You can check it out. Um, I think if you use to the, the promo code quit drinking, dude, you can, uh, you can join up as a supporter for the first 30 days and just check it out. And all that means is you get to post and comment and you're, you, can, you have access to everything in there. Whereas if you just join, you don't have to do that. Um, but you can still see everything. You just can't comment and that kind of stuff. I think that's the way it's set up, but um, it's a great group. And uh, man, I'll, I'd love to see you in there. So that's another option for you, finding sober people to hang with. Um, and we got dudes in there from all over the place. Um, another thing, you can take a commitment. Let's say you go to, let's say you go to like a, a, a meeting. A tw- let's just, let's just say a 12 step meeting at first. Let's just start there. And you've heard the, you know, many times, Oh, you got the coffee maker, or the door greeter, or I know in, uh, in CR, Jess and I did celebrate recovery for a couple of years, um, at, through our church out here. And, Oh, excuse me. Um, we did the newcomers meeting. That was our commitment. And so what that commitment does is it's just motivating to get you there because you got people relying on you. We all know that there's days when we wake up and we don't feel like going somewhere, whether it's work, whether it's school, baseball practice, a meeting, um, go down the list of things. And we're like, man, dude, I do not feel like doing that today. And that's usually the time when we know that we probably should be there and doing it. And so when you take a commitment, like I said, for Jess and I, newcomers, what we would do is we, we ran the newcomers little sub meeting after the big after the intro meeting you would do worship um if it was like a chip night you get some chips or maybe there'd be someone sharing their testimony and then they would say hey all the newcomers you're going to meet jess and shane over in the newcomers room 
and they're going to explain to you a little bit about Celebrate Recovery, how it works. And so, boom, we go over there, we'd meet him there, we'd meet the newcomers. Hey, welcome. How you guys doing? It's great to be here. Like, do you have any questions? We'd go down kind of the outline of stuff. And look, like there was something about having that that helped us to show up and and to be there because we were we were eager to serve others and to help others. And that's the point of it. And what it does is it takes us out of ourself. So when it's like, man, I God, I do not want to go to that meeting tonight. It's like, well, hey, guess what? It's not about you. Because there might be somebody there who's walking through that door for the very first time and, and they, they really need somebody to welcome them. So it has nothing to do with you. You're not that special. So just get out of your own head, show up, just show up. Three of my favorite words, uh, which can be tough sometimes, even for myself, I get it. Uh, but just show up and, and God will work. And that's kind of the point of that commitment. So I really do want to stress that. And even in our locals group, you know, I'm looking for some folks to take on um, some commitments to help facilitate some of these meetings. I'd like to have more meetings than just on Mondays, but I can't do it all. Uh, <laughs> starting to realize more of that, starting to let up and, and, and try to give up some of that control, you know, and, and let some other people take the reins and have a commitment and maybe facilitate a Wednesday meeting or a Thursday morning meeting or something. So I'm interested in that. And if you have ideas, that's something that you think you'd like to be a part of and taking on one of those commitments and, and, you know, then hit me up and we could chat about that. Um, but yeah, how to find sober groups, sober people to hang out with so many options. Um, I hope a couple of those gave you an idea. I would just say church too. I don't know, you know, different parts of, of the country have different styles of church and different people. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of in, you know, the mindset, I know what ours is like here. I haven't been to too many churches outside of in other parts of the country. So I know that's where some of you guys are at. And I'm only saying this because I've spoken with, a, with quite a few people who, um, their experience with church has been different sometimes, and maybe it's jaded a bit. And, um, like, I'm sorry if it is, that's, that's terrible. And I think about that often, you know, people who are re raised really religious or they had bad experiences with um, a crappy church or a bad pastor, or there's something happened to them or to a family member. Um, but I will say this, like God loves you and Jesus loves you. And um, man, like he's looking for a relationship with you, not a religious, um, not a religious like meeting, you know, where you got to check all the boxes and do all the good deeds in order to be worthy um, for his love. That's just not, this is not true. And if, and if you're feeling like you're at a church like that, where it feels like that, in my opinion, that's not a church I, I would hang out at. Um, and there's plenty of them that, uh, that, that aren't like that. So you might have to look around a little bit is what I'm saying. Keep an open mind. You know, I talked, I had uh, Pastor Greg uh, Monk on a couple of podcasts ago, and we talked about that, like the difference between religion and a relationship with God. So I'd highly suggest if that's something where you're confused about or you have questions about, go back and listen to that episode. It was just a couple episodes ago. As a matter of fact, I think it was, let me check here, see if I can bring this up. Uh, we had Brad last episode and then Greg, yeah, it was just, just the one right before, I think 455 or 466. So um, great dude out of Southern California um, and a veteran and a pastor. And like, that's what I, I love meeting pastors. Who's like the, the dudes who you would least expect to be a pastor. <laughs> that's, that's who I personally relate to most. It's, and, and there's nothing against um, anyone whose style is different than that. I got love for everybody, but I just find that those are the types of dudes that I connect with probably the best. And I feel like there's a lot of dudes who listen to this show who can relate to that because we relate to each other. That's probably why you listen to the show. And so, okay, I'll leave it at that. Like there's options out there. Don't get caught up in the religious stuff. Religion ruins, ruins shit for people. It really does. It ruins, um, that relationship with God. That's, uh, that's so important. And it's the foundation of everything for me. It's the only way I can stay like free in my mind and, and not worry and not stress and not, you know, and, and know that, even when I do have little worries and stress, which I do, like I always fall back and go, God, like, what, what am I going to do? It's out of my control. God's got me. He's always came through no matter what, even through the tough times. And I know he can do that for you too. Like we just have to surrender to it. That's it. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Um, I hope something spoke to you there. I hope, hope that helps. If you got questions, please, like I said, hit us up the contact forms on that sober at that sober guy podcast on Instagram. All right. 
how do we navigate friends and family that still like to party, still like to have a good time, that still drink? Let's just say that. So um, th this, is a, this is another one that there's not a one size fits all kind of answer for this. So let me just be first and upfront and foremost about that. Um, what's the scenario? What's the scenario? So I shared a scenario with you at the beginning of the podcast, right? My brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, happy birthday. Had a great, great time at their uh, little birthday get together last, uh, last Friday night, I think it was. And um, man, we had a great time. We were there from, I think it started at six and uh, we had to take Lucy. Lucy had her, um, uh, her church lock-in, which <laughs> the youth group lock-in. And so we had to drop her off there at like 8.30. So we were there for two and a half hours. And it was great. I had a great time. Like I said, I crushed like six LaCroix, ate some, some chimichangas and some chicken and some brownies and talked to a bunch of people and checked out some bluegrass. Oh, excuse me. I keep hitting the mic there. Checked out some good bluegrass band that was playing. And man, it was fun. Saw the family, saw the friends. I was in a very good place, spiritually, emotionally, um, you know, I want to be there for my family and friend. Just because I don't drink doesn't mean that I can't show up to support. Now, I will say I don't always feel like that. That's not always like sometimes I don't want to go where there's going to be alcohol. It just depends on how I'm feeling that day. And you really have to be very disciplined to know that about yourself. And then it's like, you know, what what is the reason that you're there? Do you, do you have to be there? Or is there a good reason for you to be there? Is it a wedding? Is it a birthday? Is it a bachelor party? I would say like, let me give you these two scenarios here. Like, if is it a birthday party? Like I just described where, you know, it's not going to get crazy. It's done by like 9, 930. You know, people are responsive. They are drinking. They're drinking responsibly. They're not hammered. They're not driving. They're not doing other substances. You know, um, is it that? And you have a reason to be there. It's a birthday. You're celebrating. Gift. Brought a gift. Hanging out eating food, whatever it is, like you're there. That's, that's completely different than like, I'm going to the bachelor party in Vegas this weekend with six of my buddies and we're going to party, but I'm going to, I'm going to stay sober. Like that's going to be completely two different scenarios. One's going to be quite a bit more crazy more than likely than the other one. And so those are the types of decisions where you got to go, man, that's like, I would just tell you firsthand, that's probably not somewhere I would be. I'm, I'm not going to a bachelor party in Vegas. That sounds excruciatingly, like, not fun to me. <laughs> I want nothing to do with that. Um, that's just that's just me. Like, why? why? Why would I do that? Especially if it's with my old homies or buddies or whatever who party, party hard. Like, that's not fun for me. I'm not going to do that. Um, is it Grandpa Dick and Grandma Jean's 50th wedding anniversary? And you're going to, I mean, to see that you got a purpose. Grandpa, could you imagine? Dick. Who names their person? I mean, I know Richard, Dick. No offense if, to any Richards listening out there. I just, I do think of that. Like, his name's Dick. Hey, Dick. <laughs> just say it out loud. It's pretty funny. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll stop. I, I, I apologize. I don't apologize. It's a sign of weakness, Raymer. But it's funny. Grandpa Dick and Grandma Jean, I don't even know why the hell I came up with those names, but that, it's a wedding anniversary. They're 50 years. Wow, you guys have been married 50 years. That's insane. How is that possible? I don't know because we all know those of us who are married, it's freaking crazy some days. We don't even know how the heck we're getting through it, especially if we're sober. But we do. And if it's the 50th wedding anniversary for Grandpa Dick and Grandma Jean, I'm going to be there. And I'm going to be there looking nice and fitted, and I'm going to have a plan. And uh, if you know, if stiff stuff gets crazy, you know, Uncle Rick, Uncle Rick's getting hammered, talking shit to everyone because Uncle Rick's crazy, rode his motorcycle there. <laughs> He's all drunk. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just totally making stuff up as I'm going along here. But you know what I'm getting at, right? Like you got to have a plan. You know your family. You know your friends. You know the environment it's going to be. What's your game plan? Hey, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go to the the wedding or the birthday party or the 50th anniversary. And I'm going to have a game plan. I'm going to have clear boundaries. If this happens, I'm gone. Or, hey, the event starts at 7. I'm leaving by 10. 
before it gets weird. Um, if I do start feeling weird, I start having social anxiety, I start getting like tempted, whatever, man, I'm going to step out. I'm going to make a phone call because I got, you know, my a couple homies on like ready, ready to go. I had um, I had one uh, one friend uh, who hit me up just the other day. As a matter of fact, I'm just thinking of this. Um, and uh, I, what was he going to? He was going to. Was it a work event? I can't remember what it was. Now I'd have to go back and look, but um, some sort of event. And uh, I think it was a wedding. And it was just like, hey, I'm just like, I'm just touching bases with you. I just want to let you know I'm going to a wedding tonight, you know, and it's going to be a good time, but I just wanted to connect. So that way, if I get in a weird spot, I could just shoot you a text or I could shoot you a call. And I was like, dude, absolutely. Thank you for checking in. That's such good work. Like, great job. I'm here, bro. Hit me up. It doesn't have to be anything crazy and weird. Like that's it. Sometimes that commitment and going in on that. And that goes back to, um, what I was saying about the, like in the first thing, like you have to put yourself out there. Those are the types of things that put yourself out there. Like, I know it's hard to text another grown man and be like, Hey bro, I'm going to this event. Like, I don't want to drink. I know that it could be a little tempting. Like, I'm just letting you know, I might text you if I get there, if I got to do that. Dude, like, that's not easy to do. Like, for me, it's pretty easy because I just have gone, but it wasn't, it's, I'm, I should reframe that. It's easier now is all I'm saying because I've done it so many times. I'm kind of, I've trained, I've, I've put in lots of reps in that. But I understand if it's like you haven't had a lot of reps in that yet, it, it's really tough. But I'm telling you, the more you do it, the easier it gets and the more comfortable it seems and the more normal it seems. And it is normal. It should be normal. That's what we have homies for. We're not like we used to have drinking buddies. And it's not to say sometimes we couldn't rely on our, our drinking buddies back in the day to do stuff, but a little different, like reaching out to not drink is it's a different it's a different thing sometimes for people. So I get it. Um, but how so having those clear boundaries set, if it happens, I'm gone. Um, or if this happens, I'm gone. I'm leaving by 10. If I feel weird, I can step out, have somebody to call. Um, look, and then, you know, another point I thought was a good one was like, if your family and friends are still partying and you're still hanging around and you're doing things like make sure at the minimum, at the minimum, these people support you being sober. They support your decision to not drink. Um, regardless of what they do, like at least at the minimum, they have to support you. You like if if they're people who are hanging around encouraging you to drink, oh you pussy, why aren't you drinking? What's wrong? You know, like, oh man, he's being a bitch right now. Like that kind of stuff. Excuse my language. But you you guys know, like that kind of stuff to me, super immature. And that's like stuff we did when I was like 25. You know, but there's there's that still happens sometimes. And I'd like to think that it doesn't happen as often, which I I'm, I think that. I don't think that's the case as much anymore, um, but maybe if you are a little younger than me and, and my you know little little crowd of dudes I ran with who are older now, maybe you're in your 20s or your 30s and you still do have friends or family members who do that kind of crap and like do like I would stay as far clear from those people while I'm trying to stay sober as possible. If they support you though and they're good folks, they're good family, they're good friends, and they're still doing their thing as long as you're in a good space, they support you. Um, that's something to look for. That's something that's very important. Um, like I said, if they don't support you and they're trying to encourage you, you need to cut those people out, at least for the temporary, at least until you're strong enough to figure it out and figure out what you're doing. Um, and then another thing, I think I just I mentioned this, the drinking buddies, like are they friends or are they drinking buddies? Are these people that will be, you'll find out real fast who your real friends are when you quit drinking. I can promise you that because the people that are continuing to do that, that, um, that really care about you, even if they still drink a little bit, they'll still be there for you. They'll still support you. And I have plenty of buddies who do that, who like we used to party back in the day. Um, but you know, they still drink, they still have a good time. It's not like it used to be, but they've always supported me in my decision. Even it, the first year, a couple years was a bit weird. I got to say that's took some adjustments, some, you know, it's different. It's a whole different lifestyle. Um, you're getting to know yourself. They're getting to know the new you it's, that's just part of it but they were always really supportive. And, you know, the drinking buddies, those are, you know, there, there's those folks that I don't talk to really anymore because that's, they were drinking buddies. That's it. Um, 
Okay, so let's let's move on here, man. This is taking so we're we're uh, um, a lot of stuff here. Okay, so what if your spouse still occasionally drinks or smokes marijuana? Let me take a drink here. Mm. Oh, that's good. I already did that, huh? The blackberry. Okay, what if your spouse still occasionally drinks or smokes marijuana? Well, the first question I would ask is, what is the extent? of the usage what is the extent of the usage are they is your spouse really struggling are they addicted are they doing it every day is it a problem you have to start there um do they do they drink or smoke or in particularly smoke um or use cbd for medical purposes is that the the situation because i think there's a big difference there and just for full transparency here. Um, I will say I'm a big supporter of CBD. I'm not saying that I'm a supporter of recreationally smoking fat blunts or bong rips anymore. Okay. Like I did that a long time ago. I don't miss that. Um, however, there are very, uh, there is, there is very much, um, a, uh, a strong, um, support system um, and and supported facts and evidence to support. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Something like that. I'm trying to sound like I know what the shit I'm talking about here. Um, but look, right, let me put it like this: CBD worked miracles for my wife and migraines. That's that's why I'm bringing this up here. So, and I did a I did a um, a, a podcast man years ago, three, four, five years ago. I can't remember um, with a guy named David Krantz. And it was on epigenetics and the effects of CBD, the endocannabinoid system. When you start to learn about it and look at it like that, a lot of that stuff has been like suppressed from us. It's not in the mainstream news. When we go to the doctor, they don't tell us about an endocannabinoid system. You'd be surprised to learn that your body, and you can look it up, is rant, is an endocannabinoid system neurologically. Um, in like it, it's it's a couple separate parts of your body that is that is ran off of that, and so. There are certain properties in CBD and things that um, that that help with uh, joint pain, with moods. Um, like there's all kinds of stuff, and I'm not going to get into it right now because I I'm just I want to keep moving along. And mate, man, you know it'd be great is if I had David Krantz back on um, or or somebody who can speak to this stuff a little bit more. But here's the point, like. Are they, is your spouse or the someone you love, do they do it for that? And is it an issue for you? Does it bother you? Okay. And if it doesn't, and if it's specifically for medical purposes, like I said, I'm not advocating like Cali sober. People know what that is. Oh, you don't drink alcohol, but you still smoke blunts and take bong rips. Like I'm not advocating for that. I don't find the use of recreational marijuana for myself or for, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it like as a, as a normal thing, but CBD Man, like they had, so here, I'll give you a little background here. My wife was on, um, uh, this was years ago when we, I think went around when we had cash. Um, she, her migraines were so bad, like excruciating, like where she couldn't get out of bed and they would give her Percocet. Of course, big pharma is going to come in here, take this pill. And then, you know, what happens? You start to get addicted to it. You start to have to use the Percocet for the migraine and then, the after effects of that now you took the percocet for the migraine and now you feel like uh terrible for the next two days you're moody um you know and then every time you get a migraine you got to pop one of those and it's just like it was really having an effect on my wife and i think she's talked about this on the podcast before but it's been a while um so we started trying um for her cbd and she started taking cbd <coughs> Oh, excuse me. I had some in my throat there. She started taking CBD and um, she actually even um, at, at one point, I think even started smoking a little bit just to um, alleviate some of the the symptoms of the migraine. And here's what it did. It didn't, it didn't cut out. It didn't like, it was it's not like magic. Like it's, oh, make the migraine absolutely go away. Like go away right there in the moment. But what it did is it made it tolerable and it changed something where it eased 
the the pain and it lessened the time that the migraine stuck and over a period of time of using that cbd for the migraines they have they have essentially went away she barely gets them anymore very very rarely and uh like so here's the point like percocet versus cbd oh, i'm gonna go cbd all day i'm not an advocate for that shit that they push on us through um, doctors and, and big pharma. And I also think without getting too deep into the weeds on this, cause I'm definitely not an expert on it. Um, you know, I do think that there are, uh, lots of good arguments and evidence and, um, interesting facts and, uh, conversations around, um, CBD, around mushrooms, around marijuana, around all that stuff for, um, and I'm talking about in controlled environments, controlled environments with a purpose that those can be healing agents for people who are, who are suffering from stress, trauma, um, migraines, um, physical, physical things, um, you know, relationship mending, there's all kinds of stuff there. And I just think that that, that, that stuff has been demonized in order for big pharma to, um, you know, to hold, kind of the, uh, the, the patent, or I don't know what the right word is there to hold the key, like to all your answers for all your stuff. And then they just get you worse addicted. So, okay, I'm going to stop there because I know that was a lot is that's not, you know, that's, um, that we could dive into that much more and maybe we will sometime if you guys hear this and you have, and you want to hear more about that kind of stuff. Um, I can definitely try to try to line up some guests to come on and have some conversations around that. Cause I do think it is interesting, but we're, so let's go back. What if your spouse occasionally still drinks or smokes marijuana? Where are you at with your own sobriety? What kind of support do you have? We went over a lot of this in the previous one. Like, how are you feeling? Where are you at? Um, do they have alcohol or weed in the house? That's tempting for you. Like if you're, if let's say your, your wife or husband, um, has wine. They, they still have an occasional glass of wine and they leave wine in the house. Is that tempting for you? If it is, then you probably need to address that. You need to talk about it. If it's not, it's not an issue, then there you go. Um, and then does your spouse support your sobriety? Does your spouse support it? Are they like, do they encourage you? Do you, they, even though that they still might have a glass of wine or they smoke a little bit, like, you know, are they encouraging you and making sure that you're comfortable? Like I know for years, Jess would ask me like, is it okay? Like, do you mind if I, and this would be very rare. Like if we'd go out, she didn't drink for the first probably three, four, five years, I think of when I got sober, it was very, very rare. Um, but when, whenever she did on occasion, she'd be like, do you, do you mind? Like if I have a drink and I'm like, man, go ahead. Like I'm good. You know, that's not like she's getting all tanked or anything, but like, you know, out to dinner or something. So Look, like I said, we can't hide out from this stuff. Like we have to learn how to operate around it and not have it affect us. And I understand it's harder for others, but that's why we're talking about this today, right? It's real life stuff. Okay, last one. If you ask your spouse to not drink or smoke because it makes you feel uncomfortable, will they support you? That goes back to, do they support you? Like if you said, you know, hey, like I've noticed it a little bit too much lately. It's kind of making me feel uncomfortable. Like can you maybe stop for a minute or can you just do it somewhere else where it's not, you know, because that's, that's so important. That's so important. You know, so communication is key, right? Communication is key. Opening up, being able to talk about that kind of stuff. Um, you know, letting, letting them know how you're feeling, letting, you know, letting, being open about if something is on your mind, if it's bugging you, if it's bothering you, what are you doing, um, you know, to support your own, recovery or whatever. Um, okay. So let's see. Oh, my, my video thing just shut off here. What the heck happened? How did that happen? That's weird. I think my, okay. Anyways. Okay. So let's move on here. Um, this next, this next question came from my buddy, Mike, and, uh, this is a great one. Um, he said, I'm just reaching out to you. If you have any advice, what's up, Mike, by the way, man, dude, Mike is just a shredder on the guitar. Just plays this Telecaster. It's so sick. All this old country and new country and just rock and just such a good dude and a shredder. Uh, but he said, I've been doing great being sober and I really haven't even wanted to drink. Uh, my wife's going out of town next week with the kids. And historically that's when I've fallen off. Um, I have zero, when I have zero accountability and know that nobody would find out I'll blow it and get drunk. And I have uh, have not been going to any meetings. I've never had uh, like legit accountability. 
Um, I've had some folks from my church periodically that I check in with. Um, but man, I just wanted to know if you have any insight basically. And so, man, great question. And I think I love Mike's question so much because I just love the willingness to, um, back to the very beginning, I love the willingness to see dudes putting themselves out there. That's it. Like you have to put yourself out there. I'm gonna go back to the beginning again. And Mike did a great job here. And so I just want to encourage you guys, if you're listening to this right now and you have a hard time reaching out, man, like I'm telling you, it's worth it. It's not as bad as it seems if you just reach out and you put yourself out there. Um, there's so many people who will offer help or just listen, just sit there with you and listen. Um, so, okay. So here's, here's kind of what I suggested, uh, to Mike too. And Mike's situation, um, being the business that he's in, in the music business, he travels a lot and, uh, Oh, it's the whole thing failed there. Okay. Well, that's fine. Um, yeah, he travels a lot for work. He's on the road a lot. Music business. Obviously there's a lot of people who drink out. You play it. You play shows where there's beer gardens and you play shows where there's, they're selling alcohol. Um, so that's, you know, that's a, that's a tough spot sometimes. And I don't know if you guys remember my buddy static and, uh, what's up to my buddy static as a way, uh, by the way, I need to uh, reach out to him. I haven't chatted with him in a minute, but we did the Monday, um, uh, clubhouse meeting together for, I was been on the podcast a few times and, uh, just a great dude and musician traveled, you know, around the world for like 20 years. Um, and I know one of the things that he would do in towards the last few years when he was sober is he would make sure he brought everything with him. Like he brought his little ice chest, his little cooler. You talk about it all the time and how he had his own drinks in that cooler and he had some snacks and he had a setup to where when he got to the venue, they went back to the green room or whatever for sound checks or whatever. And he had his stuff ready to go on stage with them in the back, had snacks, had drinks. Um, if he needed to go get something, he could go to a nearby you know store or whatever and, and get what he needed to get. But for the most part, he was trying to bring it with him. And that's a great way to do it. And so that kind of leads me into this. Like you have to have a game plan, no matter what you do, no matter what you do, whether you're in the music business, you're in entertainment, you're in construction, you're, um, whatever it is, you got to have a game plan. Even if you're just going to an event, like we were talking about earlier, um, just like, let's put it like this. If you're, let's just say you're a musician, right? And if you're not a musician, pretend you're a musician, pretend you're a comedian. Maybe it's something you wanted to do forever. You're, you're an entertainer, right? Before you do that, almost always, and there, there are some entertainers who freestyle stuff, but for the most part, let's just assume that the person performing is very well prepared. They have a game plan. They've practiced. They've put reps in. They've tried different things to figure out what works. And it's the same thing before you play a set or you bring um, your act out. Like, you know your set list, you know your audience, you know your other musicians, you know what songs you're playing, you know what bits you're going to drop, you know the, if you're doing a, um, a live performance play or something, you know your lines, you've practiced, you've prepped, you've, you have a game plan going into the situation. And it's the same thing, staying sober and going out in the real world. It's, it's so similar. Um, so you got to have a plan. Um, and the other thing I told, I told Mike too, I said, my advice would be to first call me if you're going to drink so I can tell you you're being an asshole and not to do it. <laughs> so you got to have friends and, and people you trust that can call you out too and go, yeah, don't do that. And I was kind of trying to be funny there. It wasn't that funny, but the point was like, call me, right? Ha have somebody that you can call that's, that you're going to say, man, I'm feeling like crap right now. You know, I might drink. Okay, well, don't do it. You know, like, how's that going to make you feel? Um, another thing, try to find a meeting or somewhere to stay plugged in at least. Um, like, so, so in this case, like his family's leaving, right? Um, find somewhere to go during that week that they're gone. Maybe it's a new meeting you haven't tried yet. Um, you know, this is part of your plan, of course. Um, Maybe it's on your schedule. Map out a few of those meetings ahead of time and then commit to those during that week. So that way you already know. Your plan's set, you're ready. Um, it doesn't have to be every night. The, the more the merrier, I feel like, especially in that week if you're really struggling. But every night wouldn't hurt either if you're up for it and if you can do that. It's up to you how you approach it, but find somewhere to get plugged in. 
a men's group, a church group, our locals group on locals platform. Once again, but we have the Monday night meeting. Um, man, there's all different kinds of options. You're starting to make that plan though. Um, okay. And here's, here's what I talked about with static too. stock up or kind of similar. His was more taking them with you. Let's just say you're at home. Let's say you're at home for this, the stretch like Mike was stock up on your favorite drinks. If you drink NA beers, that's, what's getting you through. Then, then to each his own, do your thing, get some NA beers. If that's not your, your, your thing, you don't want to drink any kind of beer, get something that you like. Like I love, um, some soda water, Pellegrino, LaCroix, bubbly, whatever it is. I, I'm not, um, I, I've even buying the big, uh, 35 packs of uh, soda water at Costco, the Kirkland's cause they're like 10 bucks and you get 35 of them. And then I'll buy the two big jugs of cranberry juice and then some lemon and boom, I got a little soda water, a little splash of cranberry and some lemon in there. And I sip on those when I'm using the Traeger or when I'm out, where did we go not too long ago? We're not with some friends to dinner. I think after baseball, they were all getting beers and margaritas and stuff. I got a soda water, some cranberry, and some lemon. That's my little drink, my little go-to. So you can find stuff that you like that you start to feel comfortable with and you still feel like you're, you know, just because you're the only one not drinking, which can be weird. Get it? But it's, it's really not. No one really cares at the end of the day because they're too busy worried about themselves anyways. But stock up on those. That's a good way to do it. Have them ready. Whether you're traveling, your ice chest, if you go out, you know what you're drinking. Or if you're at home, you know, try some new stuff out. Um, I found that it's it's more of the social aspect that I miss versus the alcohol. And this will help. You got You have something to sip on. And most of the time, no one even knows. And no one cares. No one cares. Um, the last thing that I that I said too was just remember how much alcohol sucks. And how all it does is make you feel like shit. It makes your lady pissed off at you. Um, there, there's literally, like, I can't think of anything. There's literally no benefit to drinking, period. Except maybe a temporary escape that's very temporary and doesn't last. Because you feel like dog crap the next morning. And then it, all of that stuff compounds every single day. You keep drinking about it. You keep drinking about it. You keep drinking about it. Boom. You know, and it's it just gets worse. Like I, like I always say, I've never heard anyone say, um, my drinking habits have really improved my life. Like I've never heard anybody say that. Um, so just remember that, like, think about it, try to forecast, man, if I do drink, I'm going to blow 37 days and I'm also going to be hung over tomorrow. My wife's going to be pissed at me. I'm going to let my kids down, man. I'm not going to do that. It's not worth it. It's not worth it for this temporary escape. I can do this and then call somebody or go to a meeting or check in on your on your online group if you have a dude's group. Man, there's so many ways to do it, but you got to be committed. You got to be ready. Um, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll share this too. Uh, Mike even wrote out a plan, uh, you know, because th- some of the stuff I recommended and he's like, okay, cool, I'm going to take this. And then he wrote out his whole week and then he sent it to me. And it wasn't like a big thing. It's not like I... I didn't look at it and say, well, you have this and your schedule. Nah, that's, it wasn't it. It's not, he, he did the plan himself. That's on him. He sent it to me for accountability and I briefly looked at it and I saw what he was doing and I was like, that's awesome. Dude, good job. I got it. And, and guess what? I talked to, talked to him just a few days ago, uh, just through text. And he said, man, the week went great. I didn't drink. The plan was so helpful. Um, and I'm, I'm moving on, you know, I'm going to continue going. So like, Mike, congrats, number one. Good work. Thanks for being an example. Thanks for letting me share, too, like what, um, you know, kind of a little bit about your your uh, situation and uh, what you did and how you had success with it. Because hopefully now that somebody, um, or now that you have, I've been able to share, you know, what you've done. Hopefully someone else out there listening is like, man, I can do that same thing. I'm in this business or I'm in the music business, too, or I'm you know, I travel for work. I'm a, um, a lineman or a carpenter or something. I'm all around and I got to be a little more um, knowledgeable. I wouldn't even say knowledgeable, a little more prepared, a little more prepared with how that, you know, how my days are going to go, how my weeks are going to go. Because when we prepare, we're ready. We're ready for anything. And um, man, I just, it it works. And so, oh man, good stuff. That That's, um, Man, I thought this I thought this episode was going to be like 25 minutes. It's almost an hour already. So, 
Uh, lots of good stuff there. I hope something spoke to you today. Um, I appreciate Blair. I appreciate Mike. Thank you guys. And all you guys out there who listen, um, especially all the wives that listen to, uh, we get so many messages that I send to Jess, um, about wives who are struggling with their husbands. Um, and, uh, I just want to tell you to like, keep reaching out, um, keep finding resources out and on, um, celebrate recovery church groups, you know, I know I've kind of stuck around those same things, but I feel like those are really the foundation. I know there's a lot of other private women's groups and men's groups out there on social media um, and different programs and all kinds of sober stuff you can follow and, uh, and and find resources at. So just encourage you guys to keep doing that. Um, once again, the Monday meetings, you can sign up for our locals men's group um, at thatsoberguy.com. We'd love to see you in there. Lots of dudes from all over. That's a great place to start if you're looking for some support. I hope something spoke to you today. Share the podcast with a friend. Connect with us on Instagram at that sober guy podcast. Shout out to all my locals dudes in there, man. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Love being a part of it. Peace, love, and respect. Keep your blood clean.